This is Midwest Sports Saturday. I'm Joey McWilliams from the MidwestSports.net studio. Glad to be with you on this Saturday afternoon. Listen, a full day of Division II, Division III, NAI sports going on around our footprint in Arkansas, in Iowa, in Kansas, in Missouri, in Nebraska, and in Oklahoma. So let's just go ahead and get things started right now in Division II football. Let's run down the MidwestSports.net regional rankings. Two teams are still undefeated in Division II, Southern Arkansas and Washita. Southern Arkansas, the number one team in our Division II rankings. They defeated Southern Nazarene last week 21-16, holding on for the win. The Mule Riders defense doing just what it takes to continue the unbeaten streak on the year. This could be Southern Arkansas's year for Barrett Renner as he continues to just write and rewrite the record books there in Magnolia. Well, Southern Arkansas, a tough challenge today as they're on the road to take on southeastern Oklahoma. And southeastern Oklahoma moving into our regional rankings as well. One of the things about today, the weather, it's going to be wet in Oklahoma. It's going to be wet in Arkansas. It's going to be downright cold in Nebraska. So that could have some kind of factor on what goes on in play today. Washita, the number two team in Division Two, also 6-0, and just like southern Arkansas. Washita defeated Harding. In a 7-3 final last week, the Washita Tigers defense just phenomenal this year, number one in Division II, and I believe that is the second lowest combined points scored since the inception of the GAC back in 2011. Washita taking on Oklahoma Baptist today on the road in Shawnee. Number three, Northwest Missouri defeating Pittsburgh State last week, 31-7, as the Bearcats got a measure of of vengeance from the year before Pittsburgh State stopping Northwest Missouri's 38-game winning streak. Well, the Bearcats did the same, stopping the Grills' 11-game winning streak in Pittsburgh last week. Again, 31-7 final. Northwest Missouri taking on Nebraska Kearney today. It's homecoming in Maryville. Pittsburgh State, the number four team, dropping from number two after that 31-7 loss. They're on the road today at Fort Hayes State. Number five, Missouri Western in and moving up from number 10 to number 5, 4-2 and two on the season now, defeated Missouri Southern last week 33-10, taking on Central Oklahoma today. It's number 6, Fort Hayes State, also 4-2, and two, lost to Emporia State last week 28-24, and Fort Hayes State is hosting Pitt State today, another matchup including ranked teams within our MidwestSports.net footprint. Number 7, Harding lost to Washita last week. And Harding on the road today at Southwestern Oklahoma. It's number eight, Southeastern Oklahoma at home, taking on Southern Arkansas. Defeated Southwestern last week, 31-20. Number nine, Missouri S&T drops a spot after having lose, lost to Indianapolis last week, 24-17. And the Miners are taking on William Jewell today. And number 10, Central Oklahoma moves into the regional rankings at uh, – that number 10 spot after a win last week, defeating Central Missouri 33-26. And the Broncos are on the road today at Missouri Western. Let's take a look now at Division Three. The football schedule for today looks like this. In the NCAA Division Three Midwest Sports footprint, Barry at Hendricks today. It's Buena Vista at Luther. Cornell at Lake Forest. Knox taking on Grinnell, Nebraska Wesleyan. At Loris. Now, Nebraska Wesleyan Shaka Taylor, now third on the all time rushing list for the Prairie Wolves. He has 2,229 yards. This will be the first ever trip to the Rock Bowl in Dubuque for Nebraska Wesleyan. This all time series tied at one apiece. Both those games, however, played in Lincoln. Simpson at Central today. It's Wartburg at Coe, Westminster at Martin Luther, and Wheaton at Washington. Well, you know, some interesting things happening today is Washington at home taking on Wheaton. That could be a big matchup uh, in conference play. Both those teams are 4-1 and one on the year and 3-1 and one in conference play. But it's not just what's happening on the field. It's what's happening off the field as well. As play-by-play man for the Washington Bears, Jay Murray, is going to be doing something special today. After his broadcast, he's going to be running and walking for 24 hours to raise awareness and to raise money for Rett's Syndrome. Well, Saturday I'm going to broadcast the Wash U Wheaton football game. It's a very important game. It could be deciding the conference championship at season's end. So I'll do that first, and then I'll 
trade my uh, broadcasting gear for running gear. I'm going to come here to Summers Recreation Center to do a 24-hour run walk to raise awareness and research funds for Rett Syndrome. I have a lot of great memories here, obviously, so this is a perfect place for me to, to attempt my first 24-hour run. Are you looking forward to Saturday and Sunday? I'm very, yes, I am. People are like, how could you look forward to doing this? But, uh, well, first of all, the football game is going to be great. And after every broadcast, I usually have about two or three hours of adrenaline that runs through me that has to make its way out. So um, so those those two or three hours are going to help get me through this first part of this 24-hour run. It's going to be inspiring for me to, to have her here because uh, there's going to be times during this event where I'm going to start getting really tired and really sore. But uh, she's been through so much more than I could ever think of. So she's going to be an inspiration to keep me going to the end. Even though it is fairly prevalent that uh, there's a child born every two hours that develops Rett syndrome worldwide. So there's roughly 200,000 uh, patients that have Rett syndrome currently. Uh, but even then, uh, with that kind of uh, prevalence, a lot of people don't know about it. So I've already achieved what I wanted to do is to raise awareness and let people know what it is and how devastating it is. And hopefully we get a lot of uh, help and uh, maybe be the start of something in the future Maybe we can do this every year and help move that ball closer to a cure. I'm looking to get to at least 60 miles. So I've done 12 hour runs where I've got 35 to 40 miles in that span. So if I can get to that point and hold on for the rest of the last 12 hours, I should be able to get 60, maybe 80 if I'm feeling really good. So we'll see what happens. First things first, props to Jay Murray for his intensity and his desire to do well and this is just a, a, a fantastic thing I want to say thanks to Chris Mitchell and the folks at Washington University the sports information department for that video as well this look on campus brought to you in part by Arnold Bourne and paid for by the committee to elect Arnold Bourne to Oklahoma Senate seat number six I've been broadcasting sports for a number of years, uh, back to 2001, I guess nearly two decades now. I've had the opportunity and the privilege to get to do this. And Jay is right. There is a, there's just a, an adrenaline, a rush uh, that, that goes on long after the game, especially if you, you've had an exciting time, a fun time, uh, that uh, if your team's done well, <laughs> and that goes a long way toward that adrenaline rush. But to be able to, to do this, uh, this afternoon, following a game, running, walking, 24 consecutive hours, and he says he wants to get up to 60 miles. Uh, props to him. We'll be following this story as well, and we're going to get back to you on that. Well, uh, you know, an another thing going on during the fall is soccer, and the Broncos of Central Oklahoma continuing to have a solid season. Uh, Sports Information Director Chris Brannick had an opportunity to visit with Coach Mike Cook about the UCO soccer season as they continue to roll through undefeated. All right, we're here with Mike Cook, head soccer coach at the University of Central Oklahoma. The Broncos now ranked 11th in the country, or 12 and 0 on the season, and 5 and 0 in the MIAA. Coach, you play Emporia State on Friday and Washburn on Sunday to close out a homestand. I want you to just talk about how the season's been going, and how you've been able to get off to this start. Well, we're excited. Uh, you know, obviously, it's great to get off to this kind of a start. Um, we really feel proud of the girls for really buying into the process that we started in training camp and uh, things we're asking them to, to do and how to play and uh, the commitment to just trying to be uh, great every day in practice and every day in games. So um, when you get the team buying into that, you got good leadership on the team and you get some results, uh, some good things can happen. Katie Killian leads the country in goals scored. She has 17 goals scored. She's been MIAA Player of the Week for the, each of the last three weeks. Uh, she's got three hat tricks on the season. She's just having a great year. What has she been able to do to be successful? Well, there's no one works harder than Katie. Um, she creates a lot of things for herself, but also works with other, the other players well. And uh, we've been trying to get her to uh, make those around her a little bit better as well by, you know, passing and moving off the ball. Obviously, a lot of teams know who she is now, and so to make things a little bit easier and to you know, not wear her out, we're trying to get her to share the wealth a little bit. But she works so hard and creates a lot of chances and has been finishing uh, at a great level. Your defense, of course, 10 shutouts and 12 wins. Uh, and, it's, and it's not just that you're saving every shot they take. The teams aren't taking any shots. They had a stretch of five games where they only took three shots on goal in that, in that time. So what have you been able to do defensively to keep that – uh, high level of play up. Well, that was the number one priority coming into the season. Uh, I think we only had two shutouts all last year. 
We said, look, we got to focus on keeping the ball out of our net. Uh, I feel like you know we had enough potential to score at least a goal if we had a shutout. Uh, again, it's been team defending. Our goalkeeper's been solid, but our team has been defending very well as a team, having in good shape, getting behind the ball. Uh, because of that, we've eliminated quite a few shots, and uh, we're just playing hard in, in the other team's half, trying to keep the ball in that half. So all of those things, the hard work, the effort, again, buying into what we've asked them to do has, has been a big key. The junior fullback, Kelsey Gordon, she's been defensive player of the week for two weeks in a row. Uh, she kind of leads the pack back there. What does is, what is, uh, she do to lead the pack and to get you guys playing well, like that? Well, she's, again, she's uh, really coming into her own now as a junior. Um, she's got great uh, presence in the back. She's six foot tall. Um, has really been playing with a lot of confidence and been playing strong. Wins a lot of balls in the air and uh, that, you know, carries over to the other players around her as well. Uh, our goalkeeper's been good communicating from behind. So we feel like we're really organized. We, uh, again, are defending from the forwards all the way back to the goalkeeper. So it's, a, it's a definitely a team effort. Just six games left on the schedule. What are you What are you telling your team now in practice uh, down this final stretch? Well, uh, one game at a time. I mean, obviously people are uh, are going to be gunning for us, trying to be the, the team that beats us, whatever. So, again, we we, we got to know that. We got to come ready to play hard for 90 minutes every game, and uh, just take it game by game and uh, continue to do what we've been doing and uh, execute, you know, at an even higher level. All right, thanks, Coach Cook. Uh, UCO Soccer again hosts Emporia State. On Friday night here in Edmond, hosts uh, Washburn on Sunday. Visit broncosports.com for more details. This look on campus is brought to you in part today by the Choctaw Career Expo 2018. And be sure and find out more. Take an opportunity. You could learn a lot and be able to expand your career. Go to choctawcareers.com slash Expo. Thanks to the folks at the Choctaw Career Expo for being a part of today's broadcast. Let's go ahead and move back to the football field from the soccer pitch, and we go right into the NAIA football rankings within the MidwestSports.net regional footprint. Our number one team is also the number one team according to the NAIA coaches poll. It's morning side is the Mustangs in that top spot for the second consecutive week, coming off a 77-21 pasting of Midland last week. It's going to be homecoming today in Sioux City. And the Mustangs are taking on Doan. Morningside 6-0 on the year. Northwestern number two in our MidwestSports.net regional rankings. And the Red Raiders are idle this week, getting ready for a big matchup next week. And you know who they face? Morningside. That's right. Huge GPAC matchup next week. Top two teams in the Midwest region. Northwestern again number two and 6-0. and it's Evangel at 7-0 and right now, and our number three team, Evangel, defeated Graceland last week 34-17, and the Crusaders are taking on Central Methodist today. Number four, Kansas Wesleyan, 6-0, and and continues to be undefeated, just putting points on the board left and right. As last week, it was a 56-0 win over St. Mary for, Kent, or excuse me, for Kansas Wesleyan. The Coyotes scored five points less then their season average coming in and still put 60 or excuse me 56 points on the board. Langston in at number 5 at 4 and 1 and Langston defeated Texas Wesleyan last week 55-31. Big matchup today at Arizona Christian and this could be for the Sooner Athletic Conference Conference Championship regular season championship. It's number 6 Benedictine at 5 and 1 defeated Central Methodist last week 57 nothing taking on Graceland today. Number 7 Avila was idle last week after taking its first loss of the season. The Eagles back to the field today and taking on Friends today at home. Friends having picked up its first win of the season last week. So we'll see how that works out there. Four and one, Avila. Number eight, Ottawa in at uh, five and one and making its way back into the top ten in our regional rankings. Defeated Sterling last week 48-47. And hosting McPherson today. Number nine, Southwestern, 5-2. and two. The Mound Builders defeated Tabor last week, 24-7. And Southwestern idle this week. And number 10 is Grandview as the Vikings defeated Mid-America Nazarene last week, 56-28. Doubled up the Pioneers. And at 4-1, and one, it's going to be Grandview at Peru State today in a conference matchup. We stay in the NAI right now. We move over to volleyball, looking at the top ten. Our regional rankings look like this. Grandview, well, number ten in football, number one in volleyball, 20-0 and 0 on the year, retain that top spot. Park in at number two, 21-0. and 0. Number three, Columbia, 25-2. and 2. It's number four, Missouri Baptist, 23 straight wins. 
and the Spartans are 24 and 2. Number 5 McPherson, number 6 Central Methodist, 20 and 3. McPherson by the way, the Bulldogs 22 and 1. Number 7 Kansas Wesleyan at 19 and 6. Number 8 Midland at 18 and 3 on the year. Number 9 College of the Ozarks as the Bobcats are 24 and 3. Uh, t- and uh, number 9 Oklahoma City making its way into the MidwestSports.net rankings at 19 and 2. Well, Oklahoma City is uh, going to be hosting something this year as well. It's uh, not uncommon for the folks from the Oklahoma City Stars to be hosting this tournament. The Sooner Athletic Conference Tournament will be back at Abe Lemons Arena this year, and, well, they're asking you to go ahead and make some plans to attend right now. That's the matchup he wants here on Metter. Oh, what a pass wow. and throws it down. <laughs> going to be March before you know it. Uh, the football season, volleyball season, soccer season just cruising through right now. We're right here in the middle of October and it's going to be March before you know it. So make plans now. And of course the Sooner Athletic Conference, uh, no stranger to championship basketball national champions in the uh, Sooner Athletic Conference in women's basketball, basketball, Oklahoma City University in recent years, uh, two or three of those. Mid-America Christian University with a men's national championship just a couple of years back. Well, we go ahead and stay with one of these fall sports right now. Let's get back from March and go ahead and go into October. Cross country has been out and about. Of course, today is one of those days. I don't know if you want to run in today's weather or not. I mean, some some cross country runners do. I don't know if it would be something I would today. Wet, again, throughout Oklahoma, throughout Arkansas. Very, very cold in Nebraska and Iowa today. And there's actually some call in the northwestern portion of Nebraska for snow and and winter advisories already. Is today a cross-country day? Well, I'm not sure about that. Again, for me, (laughs) whether I would want to do it or not. But I know someone who does run cross-country well, and that's Sydney Lawrence. She is the reigning GAC Female Runner of the Week. And Jordan Beach from Oklahoma Baptist University had the opportunity to sit down with Sydney. She talks about her senior year and preparation, what she's doing maybe even a little bit different or more, or more so this year. I'm Jordan Beach with Oklahoma Baptist Athletics. I'm joined here by Sydney Lawrence, the reigning GAC Female Runner of the Week. Sydney finished second overall at the OBU Invitational, and the Lady Bison won the meet this past weekend. Sydney, individually, it's been a great season for you. What's been the key to your preparation? Um, I'd say differently from last year. Um, really, it's just been... Uh, using scripture to help mentally prepare for what is going to take place. Um, Not only 
is it a hard season but also a hard semester and so like just needing all of the encouragement and um, all of the strength that I can get so just um, devoting myself to um, to the Lord and to his word and it's really just made the difference for um, whenever I want to be overwhelmed and stressed with a race um, I remember what I'm really here for and um, it really just kind of takes the pressure off and helps me to just enjoy being here. So. Good deal. Now, your team hasn't lost to a Division II opponent this year. Uh, what are the goals for your team as you head into the final month of the season? Um, I think that everyone is doing a really great job of just like staying on task daily. Like, we don't, um, I don't hear a lot of negativity, a lot of complaining out of anybody. Um, everyone's there to work and get the job done, and I think that as long as we keep doing that, that um, our results are just going to keep getting better. Um, we've, I mean, we've seen that so far, so um, I think that we have a really good shot of uh, placing in the top three or four for the region and um, moving on to nationals. So. All right, thank you. For OBU Athletics, I'm Jordan Beach. I want to say thanks to Jordan Beach and the Oklahoma Baptist University Sports Information Department staff for that video and to Sydney Lawrence as well. I've had the opportunity to follow her career since high school and on now. It's amazing to think that she is a senior and she is continuing to run so well. Let's Look on Campus is brought to you by Arnold Bourne, running for State Senate 6, and this paid, it's paid for by the committee to elect Bourne to Senate. Well, we'll go ahead now and move back over to volleyball. As we look at the Division II MidwestSports.net regional rankings, Washburn, our number one team, Right now, Washburn, the Ichabods, 22-0 and on the year, 13 sweeps. No matches this season have gone five sets as the Ichabods have been able to take care of business, and they're 22-0 and right now. Nebraska Kearney, 23-1. and That one loss coming against Washburn a little bit earlier this season. Uh, Nebraska Kearney with a win last night. That moves their record at home. Are you ready for this? 64 consecutive matches won at home with McDonald becoming the new dig leader careers she ha or in her career she has 2015 digs let me say that again 64 consecutive matches won at home for Nebraska Kearney a big deal there Rockhurst our number three team and Rockhurst and Drury the number four team in our MidwestSports.net regional rankings in the Midwest Region Volleyball Crossover. Now, this is a huge crossover within the conferences within the Midwest Region. It's an out-of-conference match right there in the middle of conference play as Rockhurst split with Saginaw Valley and Walsh yesterday, defeating Saginaw Valley, losing to Walsh yesterday. Rockhurst, the Hawks now 21-3 and on the year. One more match today. We'll talk a little bit more about Rockhurst in a moment. Drury defeated Hillsdale yesterday 3 one and Drury now 19 and three on the year. Central Oklahoma at 20 and four is our number five team in Division Two. Central Missouri number six at 16 and six on the season. It's number seven Southwestern Oklahoma. Southwestern defeated Henderson State yesterday and is positioning itself more in first place. It was a three-way tie at the top of the GAC standings at the end of last weekend with Henderson State, Southwestern, and Harding. Southwestern and Harding both win yesterday and now still have just the one loss in conference play. Wayne State at 16-6, and six, uh, coming in at number 8 out of the Northern Sun. Number 9, Northwest Missouri at 16-5 on the season. And number 10, Henderson State falls to 19-4 after picking up the loss in Weatherford yesterday. Well, you know, we talk about uh, Rockhurst, and it's been a solid season for the Hawks so far. We had an opportunity, as did John Dodridge, the sports information director from Rockhurst, got to catch up with Coach Tracy Retzke and visit with him about this Midwest region volleyball crossover and really what this means. We're with Coach Retzke of the Rockhurst Hawks women's volleyball team. This weekend, the Hawks travel to Indianapolis for the Midwest region crossover. Coach, tell us about uh, the games we have coming up this weekend. We play Saginaw Valley and Walsh on Friday. Two tough games because Saginaw's having a great year in the GLIAC this year. Plus Walsh is having a really solid year in the GMAC. And on Saturday we play Michigan Tech who's ranked 25th in the nation. So we've got a really tough uh, road to hoe because all three games will be tough games. 
How important are these games with the regional rankings coming up here in about two more weeks? Well, in regards to regional rankings, uh, they really, really means a lot because you can really help yourself out, or if you don't do well, you can really hurt yourself. Plus, it gives you kind of a springboard if you do well. It gives you a springboard for the rest of your conference games the rest of the season. Thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. The Midwest Region Volleyball Crossover continues today, and there are seven teams from Missouri as a part of the Great Lakes Valley Conference who are continuing to compete today. Well, back to the NAI in football. We talked about Morningside. We talked about Northwestern. It's a really big matchup that is on the way next Saturday, and we'll definitely preview that. Of course, Northwestern is idle this week, and from Morningside, it's homecoming. Homecoming in Sioux City. Lots going on there. As for Morningside, well, Tyler Paulson had the opportunity to catch up with Coach Steve Ryan. They talk about the win last week against Midland and, of course, today's opponent, Doan, coming in for homecoming. This is Tyler Paulson with iowasports.net. Joining me today is Morningside head football coach Steve Ryan. Coach, thanks for joining me. Tyler, awesome. All right, let me start by congratulating, congratulating you so far on the 6-0 season. Um, you guys are adding the homecoming game this Saturday against Doan. Um, how are you getting the guys ready for that contest? Well, I mean, Doan's got an outstanding football team. They got off to a, a great start, and they've just stumbled a little bit of late in some really close games. So one is just making sure our guys are focused on the quality of the football team that we're playing, uh, that they're getting a good look at who they are. And, and then, you know, we spent a lot of time, and it sounds cliches, but talking to our guys about one game at a time and staying focused on a game. And so it's really, you know, getting them to understand, hey, this is, this is the game that's before us, uh, and we just got to be ready to go. Mm -hmm. So it is homecoming for us, so there's a lot of distractions that can take place. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of reminders of, hey, you got a big game on Saturday, and it's a game that really matters. So. Let's get ready. Exactly. Um, kind of looking back to last week, I know Trent and Connor each broke their own record. Trent broke the uh, career passing touchdowns. He's sitting at 125. Uh, and Connor actually broke the receiving yards in a game with 307. Um, that's in in insane. But what's it like to have two guys like that, not just for you, but for the team to have two offensive juggernauts like that? You know, it really is special. And, you know, I've had a great run here at Morningside and been blessed. And, uh, you know, we've had five All-American quarterbacks in and, and I put Trent in that, in that mix. Every time we have one, there's always this guy that's with them. You know, there's always a receiver that's paired with them. And, and what makes this one unique is the two guys won a state championship together in high school. They, you know, um, they probably were, you know, they were playing little league baseball together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they did all these different things. They grew up together. And so there's a real connection that they have. And, and so it was, you know, it's exciting to see, you know, the game that they had and they did it together and, um, you know, it was, it, was, it was outstanding. That was Trent's first, excuse me, Trent's first start was at Midland two years prior. So he's played at Midland twice. The first time he started there, he was 16 for 16. And so he basically broke all the records this time. They didn't break last time. So uh, I think he really likes playing there. Well, awesome. Well, uh, like you kind of mentioned before, not to look past, um, Donor anyway, but you got Northwestern coming up at their place in a couple weeks. I know they're also ranked in the top five. Um, are you going to do anything different with that being like a top five matchup? Or are you going to handle it just like any other week? You know, we'll handle it like any other week. And, um, you know, it's part of who we are and what we are and is we really try to do things the same each and every week as much as we can. And that's to avoid a letdown. Um, that's, that's try to keep in our players from having highs and lows is that consistency of, Hey, you work hard each and every day as you go through things, you know, without question, Northwestern's an outstanding football team. You know, I know that because they're in the top five and, and, uh, I'm aware of them in that regard, but in terms of preparing for them, if there's anything that we're doing to prepare for them, it's the same thing we do every week. And that's, Hey, we've got to improve as a football team each and every week. Make sure you're working on these fundamentals. Sooner or later, they're going to come into play. And just keeping our guys focused on improving, you know, as a team and focused on themselves. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time, Coach. Thanks, Tom. Um, for iowasports.net, I am Tyler Paulson. Thanks to Aaron Edland, who is uh, working with sports information right now on the campus at Morningside, and also Tyler Paulson for stepping in, taking care of the interview process there with Coach Ryan Morningside hosting Doan today. Well, football all around. There was some NAI. We've talked about 
uh, Division Three football already on the field, Washington today. And, and again, uh, Jay Murray going to be running and walking after this contest today to bring awareness and hopefully raise some funds for uh, the uh, Rett syndrome and to take care of things there and to, to uh, work with that that cause. Well, Washington coming off a victory last week. Jake Kuhn, the Division Three National Defensive Player of the Week for Washington. Of course, he's getting ready for a big matchup today with Wheaton, but he talked about last mat- last week's matchup. It was a good win. Um, obviously, the weather was a big factor with the rain and the thunderstorms coming in. So defensively, we knew that the game was going to fall on us, and we came out firing. Got a three and out to start the game, and then our offense struggled a little bit first and then got rolling a little bit, put some points on the board, and you know, the second half was a little bit slower and we ended up just holding them off. Coach Fisher and I were working hard on the game plan all week. You know, we knew that they were going to try and zone us to death. And, um, <clears throat> you know, the D-line did a great job holding up those offensive linemen so that me and Jared at linebacker could run all over the field. And uh, me and Coach Mason were talking during the week at practice how I haven't gotten a pick yet this year and how Ben's gotten one and how we always go tit for tat on those interceptions. And so we knew that I had an opportunity this week and all the crossing routes that they were coming in. And, you know, I saw I was able to like jump up and pick it and you know got a nice little return out of it. It was awesome. You know, it was one of the coolest experiences I've ever had playing football. We've grown up playing on the same team our entire lives and it was really cool seeing him on the other sideline. We had a ton of family, a ton of friends come out for the game. Um, got to watch him sack Johnny, which was pretty special for us. It's really awesome, honestly. I'm pretty happy about it, but it's, you know, attributed to the coaches and the other players around me. You know, it's a team effort especially on defense. You know, of course, getting to win Defensive Player of the Week on a national scale and getting to play on the same field with uh, his brother Luke had to be uh, quite an experience last week for Jake. Of course, Washington hosting Wheaton today. Big matchup there. Let's look to football now and the schedule. Trying to wrap up our Midwest Sports Saturday and run down our list. We've talked about the Division Three schedule. How about the Division One schedule today on this Saturday, October 13th? Well, Look back a little bit. There was a Tuesday night matchup. Appalachian State took on Arkansas State, and the Red Wolves fell 35-9. to Appalachian State victorious on Tuesday. Arkansas State doesn't play today. The next matchup or the next game will be on a Thursday, so it's kind of staggered throughout three games over a four-week stretch. A little interesting feel there. Tulsa could not hang on last night and falls to South Florida on a Friday night game. Tulsa, the Golden Hurricane, fall 25-24 to the Bulls. Today's matchups look like this. Arkansas at Ole Miss today. Actually, that one's going to be in Little Rock. It's going to be a neutral side game. Arkansas taking on Ole Miss today in Little Rock. Central Arkansas at Stephen F. Austin. Iowa at Indiana. Northern Iowa at South Dakota today. Stetson at Drake. West Virginia at Iowa State. It'll be Oklahoma State at Kansas State. Austin P. at Southeast Missouri State. Missouri at Alabama. Missouri State at Indiana State. And Nebraska trying to pick up that elusive first win today at Northwestern in Chicago. We run down the Division II schedule. It looks like this. Our number one team in the MidwestSports.net regional ranking, Southern Arkansas at number eight, Southeastern Oklahoma. Southern Arkansas leads Division II, excuse me, third in Division II in turnovers gained with 17 on the year. Barrett Renner, the quarterback for the Mule Riders, is the active leader in career total offense in Division II. Coming into this afternoon's contest in Durant, 12,251 yards for Barrett Renner. Southeastern for the Storm, well, they're allowing only 126 passing yards per game. That's tops in the GAC. Third in Division II, one of those scenarios where you think something has to give today. A big matchup in Durant. Southeastern has won three straight. Number two, Washita. It's the battle of the OBUs as Washita Baptist taking on Oklahoma Baptist today in Shawnee. In eight previous meetings, Washita is 5-2-1. and one. Now, you have to think this goes back a long, long way. If you have a one in there, that means there was a tie. We haven't had ties in college football in quite some time. So you go back to when Oklahoma Baptist previously had football. There was a 73-year gap between Oklahoma Baptist's previous incarnation on the football field and where the Bison are right now. 5-2-1, and one, though, Washita all-time against Oklahoma Baptist. And in those eight games has held the Bison to less than 100 points total, just 96 points total. That's not really a surprise for the way the Tigers have played defensive well. They're tops in Division Two, giving up only 9.2 
points per game this season. So Washita on the road today. Number three, Northwest Missouri. It's homecoming in Maryville, and the Bearcats are hosting Nebraska Kearney today. Northwest Missouri 11 and 3 all time versus Nebraska Kearney 6 and 0 at home and of course we mentioned today is homecoming as Northwest Missouri scored 37 rushing touchdowns this season. That's important to think about this. They've allowed none. That's right. The Bearcat defense has shut down the ground game for the opponents. Well, Kearney uh, looking to try to shift things up a little bit because they're fourth in Division II in rushing yards per game. The Lopers, 304 yards per game rushing, another situation where something has to give. Northwest ranking number two in the nation in scoring defense, just behind Washita at 10.2 points per game. It's number four, Pittsburgh State, coming off the loss to Northwest Missouri last week. On the road today at our number six team, Fort Hay State, another big matchup between ranked teams. Fort Hay State was up 24-7 last week in the fourth quarter and gave up 21 points, lost to Emporia State. So the Tigers are 4-2 and two now on the year. But Jacob Mazzara, the Tigers quarterback, looking to become the all-time passing yards leader in Fort Hay State history, needing just 130, excuse me, 63 to pass Mike Garrison for the career record. It could be a cool day today in Hayes, but there's going to be a hot matchup on the field. Yes, I had to use that. Sorry, that's just the way it is. Sometimes you have to go with those. Pitt State at Fort Hayes State today. Another matchup of ranked teams within our regional rankings. Number 10, Central Oklahoma on the road at Missouri Western today. UCO's Clay McKenzie had 154 rushing yards in last week's win over Central Missouri. It's the first time to top the century mark this season for McKenzie, who had a season a couple years back in which he had topped the century mark seven times. He now has 2,929 rushing yards for his career. Missouri State, excuse me, Missouri Western uh, has won three straight games and well more than 200 yards rushing in those three straight weeks with at least one 100-yard rusher each time. Missouri Western 3-0 at home, won those three straight, and guess what? It's homecoming in St. Joseph. So some of these teams needing to pick up a win at home Probably glad to be at home today. Number seven, Harding on the road today at Southwestern Oklahoma. Harding has shut out Southwestern in each of the last two meetings, 42-0, 34-0. And Harding, number one in Division Two. no surprise with that ground attack. The uh, Bisons, 326.8 rushing yards per contest. Southwestern, meanwhile, on defense, Jalen Carr has had a defensive touchdown in each of the last two games, one interception one fumble recovery. It's Missouri S&T, the Miners at home today. It's homecoming. Again, that seems to be some kind of theme there. Hosting William Jewell. S&T had more than 600 yards of total offense two weeks ago, Gave or was able to collect just 252 yards of total offense last week, lost to Indianapolis, trying to right the ship. Meanwhile, William Jewell picked up its first win of the season last week, a 14-10 victory over Southwest Baptist. Cardinals on the road today to take on Missouri S&T. That's a look at our top ten. We continue through the Division II schedule right now. Arkansas Tech at Northwestern Oklahoma as the Wonder Boys have won seven straight in the series. And Byron Allen with 2,270 career rushing yards looking to move up the list now third on the all-time list in Russellville. Arkansas Monticello on the road today at Southern Nazarene. It's Henderson State at East Central. Bemidji State at Upper Iowa today. Emporia State at Central Missouri. Military Appreciation Day in Warrensburg. Emporia State's Justin Brown is now the all-time leader in receptions at Emporia. As uh, we talked about, again, playing at home, Central Missouri 3-0 and at home this year, 11 consecutive wins at Walton Stadium. And interestingly enough, the score in this game each of the last two years has been 37-31 with the road team winning. So that would bode well for Emporia State. But again, Mules with 11 consecutive wins at home. Also in Division II, Missouri Southern at Washburn today. It's Lincoln at Truman State. Lindenwood at Northeastern State. McKendry at Southwest Baptist. And MSU Moorhead at Wayne State. Let's look now to the NAI now and some of our top 10 matchups. Doan at Morningside, we've talked about this already. Morningside, 600 yards of total offense per game. Number one in the NAI. Well, 600.3. Don't want to give up, you know, those uh, that, that one extra foot of yard uh, of ground game or, or passing game offense there. 600.3 
Total offensive yards per game with tops in the NAI. Trent Solzma, well, as Coach Ryan had the opportunity to talk about him and talk about Connor Niles, Solzma, 412.2 passing yards per game, tops in the NAI. Niles, 204 receiving yards per game, tops in the NAI. Morningside not wanting to look past Doan today, homecoming in Sioux City. Northwestern, our number two team, idle this week. Number three, Evangel, a balanced attack for the Crusaders as Evangel now 7-0 and hosting Central Methodist today. And that balanced attack led by quarterback Cameron Hardesty. It's number four, Cam, excuse me, Kansas Wesleyan. The Coyotes at home today taking on Tabor. Kansas Wesleyan's DeMarco Pruitt with 156.5 rushing yards per game. Tops in the NAIA. And Kansas Wesleyan, again, scoring left, right, center, up, down, all around. The Coyotes put points on the board. They're scoring 60.5 points per game, giving up just 10.3 points per game. That is a margin of 50-plus points per game, a staggering thought. The Coyotes again at home today. Big matchup on the road today for Langston at Arizona Christian as these two teams, the top passing attacks in the Sooner Athletic Conference and in the top six in the NAI. Jalen Lowe for Langston, 301 passing yards per contest. That's six in the NAI. Grace Lowe on the road today at six, number six, Benedictine. And the Ravens putting up 42.2 points per contest. Avila at home coming off an idle week, hosting friends today back after the first loss of the season. The Eagles posting 48-plus points per contest, led by John Jacobs, the quarterback who is a two-way threat, can throw the ball, can run the ball. And let's see how the Eagles today respond to that first loss. It's Ottawa at home today over or taking on McPherson. Ottawa has Darian Dillard, who is... Uh, putting up or bringing in those catches, 8.2 receptions per game. That's third in the NAI. He has 15.2 yards per catch. Just about every time that he grabs the ball, it's going to be a first down. 11 touchdown receptions this year for Dillard from the Braves. And Southwestern, the number nine team in our NAI MidwestSports.net regional rankings. Idle this week, Grandview, the number 10 team on the road at Peru State. Grandview's Jerry Lowe picking up 114 rushing yards per contest. Concordia at Briar Cliff today as Ryan Durden continuing to lead the ground attack for the Bulldogs, uh, bringing in a little more than 100 rushing yards per game. It's Culver Stockton at William Penn today. Dort at Dakota Wesleyan. Waldorf at Valley City State. Baker on the road at Mid-America Nazarene. Bethel at St. Mary today. It's Sterling at Bethany, Missouri Baptist at Concordia Ann Arbor. The Spartans' Chris Baldwin, 127.4 rushing yards per game. Now that's in the top ten. Number seven in the NAI today. Midland at Hastings today. Big matchup there. Midland quarterback Peyton Nelson also a big two-way threat, can pass the ball, and he is picking up tops in the NAI for a quarterback rushing yards, 70-plus rushing yards per game and Oklahoma Panhandle on the road today to take on Texas Wesleyan. Well, that is a look and a rundown of the football schedule throughout the MidwestSports.net footprint from Division I, Division II, Division III, and the NAIA. So we will wrap things up here from the MidwestSports.net studio. And again, uh, wherever you are, likely some inclement weather today, so just enjoy watching your football games, your soccer matches, uh, some of them taking place tomorrow, and of course, volleyball is inside. I want to say thanks to Rockhurst Sports Information Director John Dotteridge, to Oklahoma Baptist uh, Director, Assistant Athletic Director for Sports Information uh, Assistant Jordan Beach, Morningside's Aaron Edlin, Washington's Chris Mitchell, Central Oklahoma's Chris Brannick, and Oklahoma City's Rich Tortorelli, who is also the Sports Information Director for the entire Sooner Athletic Conference. Thank you to all of them. Of course, Tyler Paulson as well for his work on the interview uh, with Coach Steve Ryan. Thank you also to you for watching. We appreciate uh, you picking us up and watching us each week. Sometimes you watch the archives, which are on our YouTube channel, and you simply have to search Midwest Sportsnet. YouTube Midwest Sportsnet. Subscribe. You know, I, I didn't know I would ever be saying that, but I'm saying that. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we are right there as well. Thanks to all of you for watching. Thanks to my family for allowing me to get to do this today. We will be back 
next Saturday for Midwest Sports Saturday. And I want to say thanks also to the Choctaw Career Expo 2018 and uh, to for the committee to elect Arnold Bourne for Senate to help us bring in part to you today's Midwest Sports Saturday. For all those folks, I'm Joey McWilliams. God bless you. Have a great Saturday. Thanks for watching.